I just had the craziest dream. You will never believe it. I've got to write it down. I was just dreaming about a butterfly. Oh, my pencil's not working. There we go. A butterfly. And an elephant. I wonder how I could include those in an artwork. Dreams make very good artworks. There was a whole group of artists that liked to tap into dreams. They were called surrealists. Salvador Dali was a very important artist during this surrealism movement. They liked to make artwork about their dreams. Sometimes they also made artwork about stories that they read that were very similar to dreams, such as Alice in Wonderland. You can see in these pictures, pictures of Alice, the butterfly, the caterpillar, the house, and lots of clocks. Here is an artwork by another artist named Chris Gall who makes very fantastical images. Just look at the fish coming out of the mailbox. He's also an author of picture books. I always like to look at a picture when I'm doing a drawing. So I found a picture of a butterfly, outer space, and an elephant. my drawing. Make sure you always start by drawing lightly. You can add people by using simple ovals for legs and arms and the body, and even an oval for the head. Start to work on adding details, slowly building up your layers of pencil. If you work lightly, you can always erase. I then created a horizon line and I started to place my elephants tiny on the horizon line. I wanted them to appear far away. I made three elephants together. Then I wanted to put one elephant in the foreground for some added depth. And I wanted to show some overlapping. I started to plan out my outer space background. Pick which color crayons you would like to use. I decided I'd like to do this artwork as a wax resist. So I added white crayon and yellow crayon to be different stars. Then I will paint over it. Here my drawing is sped up so that you can see me draw all the different areas that I put into the outer space background to make my galaxy seem super magical. So I included lots of different colors, stars, the spiral galaxy with purple and a green nebula. I outlined pretty much everything in the drawing, including the flowers at the bottom, the girl's outfit, and I added black around the butterfly. So I decided with this artwork, I wanted to do a little bit of wax resist. So that's why I colored a lot of areas with crayons, but I didn't color everything with crayons. I've got my watercolors here. And really, I just want to use watercolor for the background because I feel like it takes a lot of time to really fill in a whole area with either crayon or marker or colored pencil. And my picture is in outer space because I was picturing this butterfly riding a butterfly through outer space. Sounds very fun to me right now. Love to ride a butterfly in outer space. But I want to show you a neat trick that you can do if you do not have any watercolors. You can always take some dried out markers and put them into some water. Now I'm going to put a little less water here because you don't need a lot when you're using watercolor. And I'm going to dip my blue marker in there. These markers are dried out. They're not that good to use anymore. But there's enough ink in them. You can probably start seeing that purple is starting to come right out of the ink. So it, that water will soak every last drop of ink out. I've got a purple, a black, and a blue. And I might use that to paint the sky. 
So when you're doing watercolor with wax resist, you got that crayon on there. And remember, the reason it's good is the wax and water will not mix. They will resist. So I'm going to start by painting some of this ground area. I want it to be like a really rich green, so I'm going to wet my green paint here. I'm going to put a couple drops of water in my green paint. I got a green here, and I think this is a dark green also. Sometimes it's good to use a couple different ones, or you can use, you can mix your colors even. I'm going to put one there. I think that's a blue, but we'll see. It doesn't hurt to have a little blue. So I'm going to go ahead and paint with this green. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to be too afraid to get close to the drawing because that's where I did wax and I can get kind of close with not going over those flowers because I'm going to paint those flowers with some orange paint later. want to make sure that you have a paper towel nearby so you can dry your brush after you've cleaned it or if it's too wet. Now you could really just let these markers sit in here like for two days even to really get a vivid color but I want to get started so and I've got some purple here the purple is really light I could also use the marker and some of that ink will still be coming out of the marker. And look at my wax resist. It's not gonna stick um, to the paper. No, this, there's not much ink in the black. The black looks like maybe it's really done for. And I kinda want the bottom of the paper, there comes the black, a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna start with working at the bottom with this purple and this black. And because I did crayon on the border, the colors should not stick together too much. Look at that wax resist. I've never tried this with the marker. I mean, I've tried um, coloring with the marker, but not on top of the crayon when it's wet like that. And it works out pretty good. I can even take my brush and then I can blend that color more. So it's kind of like using um, watercolor pencils if you've ever used watercolor pencils. They're fun. So like these stars that I did in crayon, I can just go right on top of. See that pop right back out, this yellow, watch it. It's gonna pop right back out when I go on top of it. Look at that. So I'm gonna have this purpley sky in my picture. I really want to bring this purple over this way some. So just do that with my brush, keep working, and go over top of things. I don't want to go over top of the big things, but these little things, like the little stars, I can go right on top of and keep working. So I think my grass might be dry enough that I can go in and paint my orange flowers. First I gotta make sure I wash off my brush really good, so I'm gonna swirl it in the water and then dry it just a little. I don't really want a dry brush, but I want to make sure there's no color in there because I want these orange flowers to be super bright and pop. I really love the way it looks when I take this black paint across the area where I tried to make white spots. And then the white spots just magically appear. Oops, I got some black into my orange. Oh well, no big deal. No worries. And then I still have white spots all over my butterfly. And 
order to try and make a color really light with watercolor, you can wet the spot first. So if I want to do the face here, but I don't want it to look too dark, I wet the face and then let that color spread. And you can also dab it with your paper towel just a little bit if it seemed like too much. And there we go, nice base color. Now I'm gonna use my Sharpie to add a little bit of detail into the person and just to make them stand out and pop a little bit more from the background. I wanna outline my person. You do whatever works for your drawing and artwork. But I noticed I couldn't see the arm here anymore so I wanted to make sure I could see that. I'm gonna draw the face on here with pencil because I don't want it to be too dark. Just want it to show up a little bit. I cannot wait to see where you will take your magical journey to. How are you going to get there? Are you going to take a boat, a submarine, an animal that flies? Anything is possible in your fantastical voyage. Hello artist friends, I'm Mrs. Rogers and I'm here in my art studio to talk to you about narratives. We're going to be doing a lesson where you tell a story and so it's important for you to understand what a narrative is. Artists who draw pictures that tell a story are narrators. A narrative is a picture that tells a story. So we're going to be thinking about how artists create a setting, how artists create characters, how artists add details, and how they can tell wonderful stories with drawings alone. You might start out with a blank piece of paper and not be able to think of something to draw, but there are endless stories that you can draw thinking about memories that you have, thinking about experiences that you have, celebrations, or you can even use your imagination and make a story up completely and make up characters. So we're going to be looking at some artists who tell stories. First, I'd like to talk about the illustrator Chris Van Allsburg. Here's a picture of him with one of his sculptures. Chris Van Allsburg studied sculpture, and when he was sketching his sculptures, his wife noticed how amazing his drawings were and encouraged him to try illustrating children's books. I'm sure you've heard of two of his very popular books that movies were made from, Jumanji, and the other is The Polar Express, and he won Caldecott medals for both of those books. There's one book that is a little more unique. It's called The Mysteries of Harris Burdick. And this book was created after Harris Burdick disappeared and left these stories that he had written that had not been published. And so Chris Van Allsburg created an illustration for the stories and created a picture book so that there was a title and one short caption to go with each illustration. And so you can read the illustration the way you would read a story and you can predict or imagine what could be happening or what could happen after this particular picture. One favorite from this book is called Another Place, Another Time. And the text says, if there was an answer, he'd find it there. And you can look at the details in this picture and see a train track and a small vehicle on the track with some people and a sail. And they're kind of going into a mysterious landscape because it looks very foggy and a lot of clouds overhead. So looking at the details and the setting and the characters help you to read an image and understand what the narration is saying. 
Another artist that we're going to look at is Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell is another American artist who is very famous for his illustrations. Norman Rockwell, for almost 50 years, illustrated the cover of a very famous magazine called the Saturday Evening Post. And Norman Rockwell loved to capture everyday life and often in humorous ways in his illustrations. There are so many details in Norman Rockwell's images that if you look at them, you could completely imagine an entire story. Here are some images that Norman Rockwell painted for you to look at. Let's take a look at this illustration. We look at all the details in this picture. We look at the characters. We see what looks like could be a mom and a dad perhaps, and a little boy and a dog, and they're in a house. And then we see so many details that we can start to put the clues together to figure out what this painting is about. You might notice that there's a little birdhouse on the floor next to the boy and a camera and his mom looks really happy to see him that she has her, her hands on his shoulders and he's got a very large backpack. What could all these clues be telling us? So there's two artists that are illustrators showing narratives. I'm also going to show you a drawing that I did, and it comes from a story that I made for my granddaughter called Hannah's Tiny Wish. Here is Hannah that I drew, and she's holding a little mouse, so let's look at some of the clues here. And she's closed her eyes, and she's making a wish, and she's in a house. There's a couch. What could she be wishing for? Here's another illustration that I created, and look! I've unified my two illustrations by making the girl look the same and adding the mouse in the second picture. But in this picture, her eyes are open and she looks a little upset, like she's thinking of something. What could my story be about? These are just some examples of narratives and you are going to be creating a narrative with your own drawings. For this week, you're going to be not having to complete your narrative drawing, but you're going to be planning it out, sort of creating panels called storyboards where you can plan out your characters, your setting, and plan out what is happening. What happens first? What happens next? What happens last? Let's talk about the options you have for your narrative. The first option is to create a story based on something real that happened to you, you might want to start out by looking at your family photo album and find a photo that triggers a wonderful memory or a celebration that you had with your family. Take that photo and think about it for a bit and think about what happened before that photo occurred. What happened after that photo occurred? So you can complete the story or tell a little more by adding on to the idea of a photo and what is happening in that photo. So that's option number one. The second option is a really fun one. It's called My Best Day Ever. And in this option, you can think about the best day you could ever have. It could be a day that you did actually have, or it could be a day that you imagine having and how wonderful it would be. Think about where you would be, who you would be with, what's happening to you, what details can you add that would tell the story of this best day ever. What happened to you first, then what happened? What happened at the end of your story? and you would sketch out those ideas so that you'd be ready to draw that narrative next week. The final idea is one of the ones that I think I want to do, and that is a fantasy or fairy tale story. In this option, you completely can create your own story out of your imagination. You can develop a character, you can think of a setting for your character, you can come up with 
a problem that your character has and how your character will solve that problem. For this uh, particular option, I am going to use this monkey, this sock monkey that I made at the American Visionary Art Museum during their Sock Monkey Saturday. And so this little guy, George, is going to be the star of my story. And I'm thinking of a problem that he has that maybe he's stuck inside during this quarantine and he's really bored and he needs to, to do something fun. And so I'm thinking of a solution of what he could do so that he's not so sad and bored. So I'll be practicing ideas on how to draw this monkey so that I can do option number three. Be thinking about those ideas and maybe jot down some notes or brainstorm for each of them so that you can decide which one you want to develop a little further. And so that's all for today, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week where we'll talk about how to complete your narrative. Thanks for joining me today. Goodbye.